Yesterday, Blackmagic announced a new device with the same depth and angle as the ATEM Mini Extreme, called the HyperDeck Shuttle HD. It's a recording and playback device that's also a teleprompter? Have they lost their minds? For those of you in the video industry, you know that NAB is right around the corner, which means it's time for some new gear to drop. NAB is the National Association of Broadcasters, and their NAB show occurs in Vegas every year that COVID isn't wrecking our plans. Side note, for those not familiar, you can get a free ticket to attend and spend days visiting all of the vendor booths, winning free stuff, and testing out all of the latest and greatest gear. If you've never been, make sure to add it to your list. Back to this whole HyperDeck thingamajig. The HyperDeck Shuttle HD is made for the desktop user who wants to playback videos or create a master recording on SD cards or solid state drives. I'll link to it in the description below if you want to check it out. Now, just because it's being advertised as a desktop-based item doesn't mean that you couldn't bring it with you in the field. After all, it has a small form factor, but it's going to mean another power cord, either SD cards or SSD, and additional HDMI and Ethernet cables. It also means if you want to see more videos just like this, all you need to do is click that like and subscribe button down below this video to be notified when I release new content. With a large jog dial and familiar HyperDeck style buttons on the top, it contains one 12 volt DC power connection, one Ethernet connection for controlling and triggering the device, one SD card slot, one USB-C extra external hard drive connection, and lastly, HDMI in and HDMI out. Blackmagic is claiming support for ProRes, DNX, and H.264 files, but I'd be curious how friendly the playback will be with the various formats, seeing as the other HyperDex get cranky if you don't ensure that all files on the SD card are the same resolution, frame rate, and format. The Shuttle HD can play 720p and 1080p videos in both NTSC and PAL, and interlaced or progressive, which leaves a bit to be desired at a starting price point of $495, especially when the HyperDeck Studio HD does the same exact thing, but includes two SD card slots and a preview screen. One of the features that was shown off on the announcement video was the jog and shuttle button, which allows you to queue up a video to a specific frame or even do a slow motion replay. But I'm curious to see if this is going to act as a true replay device or if it's only something that you can do once you have stopped a recording. While instant replay is a feature some people may want for live streaming sports, I simply don't see the value here. Now, an important point to make here. At first first glance on their website, I thought the Shuttle HD does not play content off of an external USB-C drive. It is only for recording to a drive, but as I searched more, the Blackmagic website states, simply create animated graphics files with a primary green background, load them onto an SD card or USB-C drive, and play them from the HyperDeck shuttle into an ATEM switcher. This is something I think we should all be keeping our eye on because it means that Blackmagic is exploring using SSDs for sending content into a workflow. This might mean that at some point in the future, we won't be limited to a 20 image media pool, but but rather how large of a solid state drive that we have. But the strangest feature of all is the built-in teleprompter. Yep, so it records, plays back, and prompts? I guess it's a neat party trick, Blackmagic, but if there's anything I've learned from using a teleprompter with clients, it's that having the ability to jump in on the fly and edit lines isn't just a luxury, but it's really a must. The Shuttle HD can read RTF text files from the SD card, and you can move between the scripts using the previous and next clip buttons. The fonts and formatting will copy over from the RTF file, which is a nice addition. But if you want to make edits, you'll need to eject the card, pop it into a computer, tweak the RTF text file, save it, eject the card, and pop it back into the Shuttle HD. In a professional setup, that's going to frustrate the client. To wrap things up, 
who do I think this is for? After watching the announcement, I was left kind of scratching my head to be honest. If I'm going to use a teleprompter, I'd be using teleprompter software that allows me to edit the content. I'm still going to need to purchase a prompter and screen anyways. Maybe if you're on a live stream and want to have a simple teleprompter device that can run an HDMI feed to a screen, but you don't have an additional laptop with teleprompter software. But I can't justify spending $500 on that, especially not when the device can't be a teleprompter and a simultaneous recorder. So what about recording? Well, it's only got one HDMI input, which means we could only record a program feed, not ISOs. I already have a Samsung T5 drive, so recording is taken care of. For playback, however, this could get interesting. If it means being able to play video files off of a solid state drive, I might consider it, but I'm disappointed that this isn't a feature built into the ATEM. I feel like this shouldn't require another $500 device. It's clear that this device is certainly targeted to the prosumer market, with some features and usage cases that may work in the professional setting. With that said, this is just my opinion, and so I'm open to hearing the usage case that you would use this for. So let me know in the comments down below, what in the world would justify $500 for this? Talk to you down below.